now uh, like to turn to our lead discussant, uh, Ms. Versilen Diaz, founder of the National Network of Quilombola Lawyers from Brazil. Mr. Diaz, Ms. Diaz, you have the floor. Gracias. Uh, thank you very much. I'm speaking on behalf of the Stakeholder Communities Group, uh, uh, communities which are discriminated on the basis of work and uh, descent. I'm Versalyn uh, Diaz, legal advisor of the National Coordination of uh, the Quilomba Rural Black Communities, um, which is fighting for the rights of uh, Quilomba communities, Quilombola communities at the local, regional, and national level. I'm uh, from the uh, uh, Kalunga community, the first community recognized by the United Nations as a Tika, which means the territory and areas conserved by indigenous and local communities in Brazil. We have a population of 1.3 million people with uh, about uh, 6,000 communities distributed throughout the country. We have always lived in this territory and we continue to uh, fight for our existence uh, in opposition to the capitalist development, which insists on displacing our peoples and fighting for sustainable socioeconomic development uh, for our own livelihood. We want a development, uh, but from our uh, point of view, one that uh, respects other forms of life in our community and one that respects the environment. Uh, unfortunately, the Quilombolas uh, continue to suffer structural racism as well as institutional racism, which can be seen in different forms of uh, oppression, discrimination, and uh, ethno-racial segregation continues to be a major obstacle for implementing the SDGs. We represent 270 million people around the world. We are the Dalits and the Bureau crewmen in Asia. We are the slave caste in Gambia and Mauritania, the Quilombolas and the Palenque in Latin America, and the Roma people in Europe and many others. These communities share the common experience of living in segregated societies which discriminate against them due to their perceived lower social status, often linked to, to labels such as impure and contaminated. If we want to put an end to poverty in all of its forms and throughout the world and not to leave anyone behind, the member states must make a commitment to, to undertake transformative action which would tackle systemic discrimination and structural inequality. I would like to call upon member states to, first of all, include a specific reference in the ministerial declaration and in the Pact for the Future uh, to acknowledge uh, the discrimination of marginal groups, uh, including those communities that are discriminated against on the basis of work and descent, and to tackle the uh, intersectional aspects of this discrimination due to gender motives, religious minorities, uh, persons with disabilities, LGBTQIA, PN plus people, and other minority groups, uh, recognizing that uh, discrimination based uh, on work uh, and uh, dissent uh, can be seen in the exclusion and invisibility of these communities um, of uh, sustainable development policies, and in particular, in the fight against hunger and poverty. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Diaz, for your very important intervention about the rights of all communities that face historical injustice, discrimination, exclusion, and the need for that kind of transformative and structural change that can make the rights of all communities a reality. With that, I am very pleased to hand over now 